Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very, very much hope that this video finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. And today, if you don't mind, I would very much like to continue on with the wonderful viewer questions that you so very kindly submitted to this channel a few months back. And so that brings us to the next question or set of questions, I should say, from Melvin Moten. So hello, Melvin. It is always nice to hear from you, and I hope this video finds you well. And you ask, how do you feel about commentary tracks? Are there any that have enhanced the viewing experience for you? Is there a film you'd personally like to record a commentary for? Oh, wow, this is wonderful. So I should say that, generally speaking, I am a great fan of commentary tracks, very much so. Whenever there is a release, a physical media release of a particular film that might happen to have a commentary track, I am always very excited to hear that. And so I'll always try to put aside some time to, to listen to those whenever I can, because I'm always looking forward to the conversation. It's like watching a movie with a friend or with an expert or with a guide, uh, someone who will provide some type of commentary, observations, critique, uh, ways of interpreting uh, stories about the background production, uh, other maybe details that might go unnoticed uh, otherwise, etc., etc. So uh, that's my way of saying that, of course, there are many types of commentary tracks. For instance, there are the tracks that might be from people who are direct participants of the filmmaking process itself. So maybe people who are part of the cast or crew, sometimes both. Sometimes you have optional commentary tracks from certain cast members here or certain crew members there, etc. So those often bring with it uh, a lot of background detail behind the scenes, uh, anecdotal information, which is always very interesting. And then you might also have people who aren't necessarily directly involved in the filmmaking process, but still bring with them so much expertise and depth of knowledge with respect to this particular film. For instance, academics, scholars, film critics, or uh, otherwise self-described fans of the film who have this real deep working knowledge of the nitty-gritty, the ins and outs, the very fine details when it comes to a particular work. And those sorts of commentary tracks too, I think are really very exciting indeed. And then of course, there aren't, I mean, I must say too that not all the commentary tracks that I've heard in my entire life have ended up being, say, pleasant listening experiences for me. Of course, there have been commentary tracks that maybe for one reason or another Maybe I wasn't necessarily into as much. Uh, maybe it had to do with the presentation or the, the style of approach or something along those lines. But then again, it's just like with anything, you know, that, that's, just the, you know that's just something that uh, happens uh, when it comes to uh, commentary tracks. And I think that's just another indication of the potential for any type of commentary track that you might find. It's, it's, again, it's just like uh, talking with someone or hearing someone or listening to someone talk about a film, and that's exactly what it is. So, uh, so I think there are many different possibilities. Uh, maybe, uh, hopefully, uh, they are as, they are almost, I mean, hopefully uh, you listen to as many quote-unquote good commentary tracks as possible. Of course, there might be the occasional, maybe not so good one, but that's okay. That's okay. Those, I think there is a potential for, uh, for um, uh, a type of exploration when it comes to the possibility of commentary tracks. So that's, I think, my long-winded way of saying that, yes, I feel uh, I have a uh, very, uh, I'm very happy whenever there is a possibility of listening to commentary tracks. And then you ask the second question, which is, are there any that have enhanced the viewing experience for you? Uh, yes, there have been many uh, that have enhanced the experience for me uh, in, uh, in almost deeply profound ways. 
So I can, maybe there's too many for me to count or too many for me to mention here in total. So I can mention maybe just uh, off the cuff, for instance, whenever there is a commentary track involving John Carpenter and Kurt Russell, I am there. I can give a great example of a commentary track by them with regard to the film Big Trouble in Little China. That commentary track is simply divine. It is one of the one of the best because it's it's like listening it's watching a a really fun film with two friends it it feels like that and they're just they're laughing and having a good time and they're just they're giving details about the production and and they're just enjoying themselves and they're and you can tell they're jo- they're enjoying each other's company etc so that is a really wonderful example um also I can mention I've been watching a lot of, of the films of David Cronenberg recently, and so whenever there's the opportunity to listen to a Cronenberg commentary, wow, that is a that is quite quite the experience indeed. So, whenever you have that opportunity, my friend, and you are into the films of Cronenberg, and I strongly suggest that if you haven't already done so, um, I can also say, for instance, that. Uh, speaking of filmmakers too, I'm, I've also been, um, whenever there's the opportunity to listen to, for instance, a, a commentary track uh, by the great John Waters, I am there. I am so there. I love John Waters' works. And so, and whenever there's the opportunity to listen to his commentary track, it is just so much fun. Uh, he is always so funny and energetic and just the way he, he uses language and just the learning process. There's a great film. Uh, it's it's a film that I don't think is is uh, talked about enough. Um, well, maybe it is, and I'm I'm just not aware of it, perhaps. But there's a film that I really enjoy so much. It's called A Dirty Shame by John Waters. And if you uh, th- there's a there are maybe different versions that one can uh, get of that film uh, on DVD at least in North America, as far as I understand. I, I have those on the shelf, by the way. And, and uh, you can get the, the version that has also the optional John Waters commentary. And from the get-go, the, maybe the first like 10 seconds of the commentary track, I was just laughing. The first thing he talks about when the film opens, it's just, it's so funny. And just from then on, it's just, a, a, it's like laugh out loud uh, type of, of uh, of experience and just the and there's a, a, a there's a type of of language uh, there, there's a lot to do with language the 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 very specific uses of the English language uh, with regard to that film and that he elaborates on and gives a lot of uh, detailed explanation about in the commentary track and so it's also a really wonderful learning experience for me so i'm uh, that's another great example and then maybe examples in the in the department or vein of say the uh the the, the people who are critics or experts or reviewers or uh, podcasters or self-described fans of the film and so there have been so many uh so many to count and so i i, I can only mention a few um, again just in the interest of time but um, I, I just recently, for instance, just so many wonderful, delightful ones. Uh, whenever there is the opportunity to listen to a commentary track from the great uh, Cat Ellinger, I'm there. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the work and the commentary tracks of Cat Ellinger. Uh, for example, uh, Kino Lorber released a film directed by Alfred Hitchcock, which is called Under Capricorn. And released it on Blu-ray. And one of the great things about that Blu-ray is you can listen to the optional audio commentary track from Cat Ellinger. Wow, wow. I would never have thought that that film would have gotten a release with a commentary track, let alone a commentary track from Cat Ellinger, who is so great in that track because she, of course, shows so much expertise. Her breadth of knowledge about that film is incredible. Any film she talks about, her breadth of knowledge is incredible, absolutely incredible. And it's not just that, too, because she has so much uh, insight because she is really into the film. 
whenever she's speaking about a film, you know that you're in for a great time because you are with someone who is so passionate about that particular work. And it was so great to hear her comments about Under Capricorn, about how she really admires this film. She loves this film for certain reasons that she goes into and that this was giving her the opportunity to share with us, the viewers, the listeners, uh, about that particular uh, p passion that she has for this particular film and any other film that she may have a chance to speak about in a given commentary track. And so there are a number of those that are available in various releases. So that's just another example. Um, uh, speaking of, of uh, Kino Lorber, uh, I, I, uh, there's also the great film, um, uh, Joseph Sargent film, uh, The Taking of Pelham 1, 2, 3, uh, Walter Matthau and Robert Shaw. What a great, great film that is. I had a chance to speak about it a little bit earlier this year. I'd love to speak about that uh, in more detail if possible. But one of the great things about that Blu-ray release, the Region A Blu-ray release from Kino Lorber, a Studio Classics line, is that there is an, a great audio, uh, optional audio commentary track uh, from uh, Pat Healy and Jim Healy. Now, they aren't necessarily directly re related to the film production itself, but they are self-described fans of the film. And my goodness, from the very start of the film, and you listen to the commentary track, and they are just getting into all of the details, starting with the credits, the opening credits, and starting with how much, how often they saw the film as they were kids, and they, they basically have the film memorized by heart, so they know every single detail. Again, they are self-described fans of the film, and they just are speaking about it with love, care, uh, attention to detail, exquisite attention to detail, and this energy, this vibe in the air, it's like, again, they are guiding us along the journey. Wow, and they're teaching us so many details about what they know about the production background and how they feel, what it is they interpret certain scenes to be. And also they are having conversations at the time, right? At the time of recording the commentary track about maybe they're, they're saying, oh, the, the color of a particular piece of uh, wardrobe is, is this color. No, it's that color actually I'm looking at. Oh yeah, you're right, it is a particular color. It's, oh, this type of thing is wonderful. It's again, like having uh, just enjoying the time with friends uh, who are also uh, like-minded in terms of a love for cinema. And my goodness, what a great time that is, right? So that's another great example for me anyway of another commentary track that I really enjoyed recently. And that there are just so many. There are so many. I, I didn't even mention uh, some of the great commentary tracks that can be made available in a lot of the Criterion Collection releases. Uh, but those are wonderful. Um, uh, the uh, the the uh, I've mentioned the film a lot, uh, but the you know, we mentioned again the Edward Yang film, A Brighter Summer Day. That release from the Criterion Collection is one of the greatest releases uh, on uh, Blu-ray physical media. Uh, uh, ever, in my view. And uh, one of the reasons why that is, well, well, there are many reasons, one of which being the film itself and the the way in which it's now made available for people to watch, hopefully as many people as possible. But another great reason is that it includes, I think, what might be regarded as being a type of essential text, uh, supplemental text for the film. That is the accompanying commentary track from the great Tony Raines. That film is so dense, and that film is so filled with ideas and history that it, it is, and it, it's, it's uh, maybe it's, it's a film that is also quite long, and there are so many details, both uh, 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 within the text and outside of the text, that I think uh, uh, make it so that maybe a commentary track from an expert in the film and someone who also has some direct ties with Edward Yang and some of the details, etc. Uh, this type of expert commentary track from an expert like this, who is so passionate about this, who knows so much about this film, I think is also a very valuable, tr not just a valuable treat, but in many ways a type of essential, uh, essential guide, as it were, or one of the essential stops along the way in terms of, of my own you know, exploration of that magnificent work. Uh, brighter summer day. So I can mention that as maybe one of uh, of thousands 
hundreds of thousands, maybe even more, who knows, of examples of commentary tracks that I have listened to that have just given me a lot of joy and a lot of uh, uh, ability to learn just that little bit more about a particular work. And again, I don't claim to know everything about a film. Uh, on the contrary, I know very little. Uh, so that makes uh, this type of opportunity of commentary tracks to be something that's very valuable uh, for me and something that I, I always look forward to whenever there's that possibility. So, And again, there are so many, so many to, to, to choose from. Maybe, again, too many to uh, mention all in total here. But those are just some recent examples and things that have come to mind recently. Um, and then you say, finally, is there a film you'd personally like to record a commentary for? That's a really difficult question. It's a great question. It's so difficult, though, because I, I don't, I, I wouldn't be able to provide any type of, of even like passing grade type of performance for a commentary track. So I wouldn't even be able to perform, like I couldn't give an A performance, I couldn't give a B performance, not even a C, not even a D minus performance. Any type of commentary track I would give would be in the F territory or below, that's for sure. So I don't think that I could give a good commentary track for anything. Um, you know, I, I, I suppose if I were to give it a good effort, uh, then I could say, I guess, just as a as a fan of uh, the particular film, I don't know. I'm I, I I do. I mean, I would have said Big Trouble in Little China, but I think there is that great commentary track. There are so many commentary tracks, but I I don't think nothing will ever eclipse the currently existing commentary tracks for that. So uh, that. Probably I, I I won't use that as the the means to answer the question. Um, I could also say too that I've mentioned it before, but I'm I'm uh, I'm a huge huge fan of of say Agatha Christie uh, film and TV adaptations, and so whenever there's the opportunity to listen to some commentary tracks, there there have been some great again Kino Lorber. I mentioned them again. They've recently released some films, uh, Agatha Christie. Uh, film adaptations from um, uh, the, the 70s and early 80s, for instance, Death on the Nile and Evil Under the Sun, starring Peter Instinoff as uh, Hercule Poirot uh, and, and others. And so th those, those have some uh, very interesting commentary tracks as well. I'd love to be able to listen to a commentary track about Murder on the Orient Express, or I'd love to be able to talk about Murder on the Orient Express, the Sidney Lumet film, because I... I love that film. I don't claim to know everything about that film, but I I do have uh, a lot of uh, well, not a lot. I do have some things that I might be able to say, but at the same time, it, I don't think it would be any type of pa like passable type of quality. But uh, that might be something. Um, and also, there are some other um, I've mentioned before. I'm a big fan of of uh, of. Uh, um, um, I'm a big fan of uh, uh, BBC Miss Marple starring Joan Hickson. So I, I would love to talk about those series, those episodes, um, uh, just, uh, just to mention the little details that I always am drawn to whenever I watch those episodes. I watch them a lot. So that might be a possibility. Th th that might be somewhat, maybe, uh, I, I don't think there have been commentary tracks recorded for those. If there have been, please let me know. If you have any knowledge, please let me know. But I'd love that. Uh, it doesn't have to be for me, but if anyone has the ability to co record commentary tracks for those, I'd love the, to hear that as part of my own continuing journey about exploring those particular works. Um, and th there are, again, countless others, many, many others, uh, uh, that I, I would I love to watch, but it, then the question is, how well, could I could I make a commentary track for it? I don't think I could. It's just it's a very difficult skill uh, to have. So I, I mm, oh my goodness, it's a very difficult question. Um, I'll try to pick one more, perhaps. I, mm, that's a really difficult question. Maybe. I could say too that um, the 
maybe I could mention to there's a film I, I've spoken about a little bit uh, on this channel. It's a film from the so-called Showa era of Godzilla films, Gojira, and that film is called uh, uh, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. Now, I love this film so much, and I've spoken about it in a, maybe a live stream maybe a couple of years ago or so. I love this film so much, and I would love to talk about that. Again, if I were to make a commentary track on Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, the quality would be so poor, so low, low, low. But still, uh, um, that might be something that I could say as an example to answer your great question, uh, Melvin. So, again, I apologize for the, the, uh, the, 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 the lack of a satisfactory answer uh, to these questions, but I hope you can forgive me. They are very, very intriguing indeed. So, um, uh, but anyway, Melvin, let me stop there and let me then turn the questions to you and see how you feel about commentary tracks based on the questions that you asked. And, and that, of course, uh, invitation is extended to anyone who might be watching, who might be interested. As always, I'd love to hear what it is you have to say. Okay, so thank you very much, Melvin, and thank you very much to all of you. I very much appreciate it, and uh, please continue to be happy and healthy and well, and please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. So thank you so much, as always, for your time. I very, very much appreciate it. Stay strong, stay safe, and cheers.